Hi class, welcome to chapter three, listening. In this uh, chapter, what we'll cover is the importance of listening, listening and critical thinking as it applies to evaluating speeches, the four causes of poor listening habits, and then developing effective listening skills. So how can we develop our active critical listening skills because that becomes very important as we are processing information that's being uh, communicated to us, especially through public uh, speeches. So let's dive into first the importance of listening. So we know that as students, we spend about 55% of our time during the day just listening. So you're listening to lectures like this, you're jumping from one class to the next, you're probably engaged in a lot of listening, maybe at the workplace or within your families. So we spend pretty much most of the day, a, a good portion of the day, just listening. Now, within a professional context, we see that CEOs spend about 60 to 65 percent of their time listening. Now, this is really interesting because we typically view leaders or people who are leading an organization as having to speak more. Well, the opposite is actually true. Effective leadership is really contingent on our ability to listen to the people around us. So we see that chief executives spend about 75% of their day just listening. Um, we see that, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, listening is the most common behavior at work. And of course, if we look at our uh, personal lives, uh, listening is uh, contributed to uh, relational satisfaction and upward mobility. So being able to effectively listen to uh, the people that we love in our lives actually increases that relational satisfaction. So the graph on the right is uh, a breakdown of the various uh, uh, communication methods that we engage in and the percentages. So listening about 40 to 70 percent of our day is spent listening. We typically are only uh, speaking about 20 to 35 percent of the time. We spend about 10 to 20 percent of our time reading and then 5 to 10 percent uh, writing. And of course, <laughs> this isn't uh, taken into consideration. Uh, the time we spend binging Netflix or browsing our social media. So uh, take, take these numbers with a grain of salt. But it does illustrate that we spend most of our time listening. Either that's listening to, for, to, uh, to music, to speeches, to uh, lectures, to, you know, our friend who's venting to us, all of those things. So let's take a moment and really figure out what is the difference between hearing and listening. Uh, so sometimes, you know, when people ask us, do you hear me or are you hearing me? Then it's like, well, yeah, because that's the biological process. I can hear your voice in my head, but am I actually listening to you? That's the question, right? So we see that hearing is just the biological, physiological process in which sound enters our eardrums and uh, those sound waves and pressure waves bounce off our eardrum and vibrate the things in our ears. Um, it's been forever since, uh, you know, I learned about the ears. So I know there's an eardrum and there's some something else. There's like that little stirrup thing. Anyways, I'm going on a tangent. Uh, listening is more of the cognitive psychological process. So what do we do with that, um, those sound waves that uh, send electrical impulses to our brain? Well, we have to perceive and interpret and assign meaning to what we are hearing. And so this is that listening process. It's the process of receiving and responding to other people's messages. It includes interpretation of what you hear. So that is the difference. So the way I remember this is hearing is simply the biological process, the mechanical process. Listening is more of the cognitive psychological process of attaching meaning to what we hear. 
So the book talks about uh, this, the different types of listening. Uh, so let's go ahead and go through the listening typology. We have appreciative listening. This is listening for pleasure or enjoyment. So the other day I uh, clicked on my Spotify and while I was working and was listening to some nice jazz music. Like um, I'm one of those people that can't listen to anything with lyrics as I work or type because I'll start typing the lyrics like into my paper and I'll be like, what, what the heck am I doing? So I typically use just uh, listen to instrumental music when I study or do work, right? So, you know, that's, a, you know, listening for enjoyment. I really like uh, podcasts. So when I'm driving to work, um, I typically will put on a, a, a podcast. Recently, I've uh, gotten into uh, ghost story, real life ghost stories. It's a podcast. Um, and the couple that uh, facilitates the podcast are like from Ireland or something. So they have really cool accents. So uh, again, I enjoy listening to podcasts and stuff. So again, um, that is the appreciative listening, just one type of listening. Next, we have the empathetic listening. This is listening to provide some sort of emotional support for a speaker. Now, oftentimes we engage in this type of listening within our personal lives. So we might be listening to our partner, you know, uh, discuss their horrible day at work, or we might listen to a friend. Um, so this is where we're really listening. Uh, to the message, but with the um, with the motivation to offer some sort of emotional support for this person, you know that that's uh, really uh, what is motivating us to listen. Now we have uh, the third type, which is comprehensive listening. This is listening to understand the message of a speaker. So I would argue that typically comprehensive listening takes place in a in a more formal setting. Um, so within the workplace, we listen to maybe our boss or employer uh, explain a procedure. So we're trying to understand uh, the message of a speaker. And then critical listening. This is where we listen to evaluate a message for uh, purposes of accepting or rejecting the message. So obviously, because we are, you know, studying public speaking, this is going to be probably the most common listening technique that we will be or listening style we will be implementing this semester is evaluating the messages in terms of the evidence, the logic of these messages to figure out is this something that I'm going to accept as credible, you know, reliable information or am I going to reject it? So there's a lot of uh, different context in which we engage in critical listening. You know, academia is just one. We see uh, maybe listening to political speeches or, or addresses, um, campaign speeches, like we're trying to figure out, does this political candidate is, uh, are the message they're communicating, uh, am I accepting it or rejecting it based on whatever criteria we're operating from? So what causes poor listening habits or poor listening? So the book talks about four predominant things that impede our ability to listen effectively. And the first one is not concentrating. And this has to do, uh, this relates to a concept called spare brain time. And that is essentially the difference between the rate at which most people speak, which is 120 to 150 words per minute, and the rate at which the brain can process language, which is about four to 800 words a minute. Uh, this gap between our speech rate and our uh, cognitive processing rate often uh, creates a, a gap for distractions. And so we go on these uh, you know, psychological tangents or field trips, our brain just kind of gets up and walks away. Um, so maybe a speaker says something that reminds us like, oh yeah, what am I going to eat for lunch? Or, oh yeah, I was listening to that song yesterday. Or, oh my gosh, I can't believe so-and-so, you know, I still can't believe so-and-so said that to my face the other day, right? So 
Um, not concentrating is uh, contributed to this uh, spare brain time and distraction. So, uh, you know, we can't 100% avoid uh, this spare brain time because it's kind of hardwired in our physiological uh, disposition. However, you know, the more consciousness we illustrate in being present in the moment and trying to listen to a speech, uh, we can decrease the amount of uh, distractions uh, that we experience. So active listening is the cure. Um, when we find ourselves getting distracted to refocus uh, our attention back onto um, the speaker. Now, there's a lot of fascinating research associated with uh, concentration and uh, to, uh, what was it? Uh, Tony Ranke uh, published a book called uh, Competing Spectacles. And this is based on some, a lot of research um, that looks at our ability to pay attention. So our attention span is uh, exponentially decreasing if I can if I can say exponentially uh, decreasing so it's it's systematically decreasing over time primarily because the pervasiveness of distractions is infiltrating every aspect of our uh, human life and so if we just look at you know how social media platforms are socially engineered to become addictive you know, with endless scrolling or even Netflix, how the episodes uh, automatically play like within 15 seconds, you know, and so it's harder to illustrate self-control and discipline and break our attention away from these technologies, these uh, social media platforms, these um, companies that are engineering addictive behavior for us. So, you know, when it's hard to concentrate, it's probably because we've been conditioned and, you know, everything's vying for our attention because, you know, traditionally we view, viewed uh, social media as a product in, in which we were consuming, but the reality is uh, we are the product. You know, social media is this free platform, but it's taking our information and it's selling it to advertising agencies and um, big data uh, companies. So not concentrating is a serious, I think, um, side effect of just the, the society we live in. You know, we're, we're connected 24 seven and that makes it hard for us to um, be attentive for a long period of time on one particular task. So the second is listening too hard. Uh, it's like going from one extreme to the next and so not concentrating at all to over concentration. So uh, it's more produ productive to listen for themes, key ideas and key points than trying to remember every single word that a speaker tells us or uh, says. So this is kind of cool. Um, that we don't have to listen too hard, but we want to listen for those uh, main themes and ideas. So I typically tell my uh, uh, students, like at the end of your speech, people aren't going to remember every single thing that you say, but what they will remember is how they felt during your presentation. And so we will talk about emotions and emotional appeals later on in the semester. But the idea that, you know, sometimes we're going to mispronounce a word, sometimes we're going to uh, screw up, um, you know, maybe we won't say exactly what we plan to say. That's okay, because chances are the audience isn't going to even remember that. But what they're going to remember is how they felt during your presentation. And so if you can make the audience feel a particular emotion, you know, and we'll talk about the different methods you can do to um, reach out to your audience emotionally. That's what they're going to remember. So uh, don't strive to be super critical and remember every single word because that could actually decrease our effective listening skills. 
Jumping to conclusions is the third poor listening uh, style or habit. And so instead of active listening, many people just jump to conclusions and we could tie this back to uh, spare brain time as well. So we think we know what the speaker is going to say. We, th we think we know uh, the conclusion or their argument. And so we just jump to conclusions. So we make those snap judgments. So in order to avoid this, be patient. Uh, and listen to the complete statement or the complete speech or argument before reacting to the speaker, right? And that's kind of one of those ethical guidelines as well. You know, be open uh, to new ideas in, in their entirety. Uh, give the respect to the speaker and listen to their full message before, you know, coming to your own conclusion. The fourth one is focus, uh, focusing on delivery and personal appearances. So it's easy to focus on a, how a person is speaking, um, including their accent, their mannerisms, um, and their clothing, hair, and makeup. So when we place too much focus on the delivery and personal appearances, that can be extremely distracting. You know, so if we're sitting there looking at someone and you know we're critiquing their style or you know how they did their makeup or you know their hair or whatever um, that is detracting from our ability to pay attention to what they're actually saying so don't get caught up in the delivery and the personal appearance of a speaker right because what really matters is their message now I don't want you to interpret this as like, oh, well, I can give my speech, you know, laying in bed, sitting, you know, in my pajamas. Like, no, we still want to maintain professionalism while we deliver our speeches, but that is, in of itself is not the end goal, right? So we want to balance between this delivery, personal appearance, and the content of our message. So another, um, uh, factor that contributes to poor listening that I think is really important, which the book doesn't really talk about until the end uh, summary, is this poor memory retention. And so typically in the moment when we're listening to a message, we only capture about 50% of that message. So immediately after a presentation, we've only captured about 50% of what the speaker has told us. Now that decreases to about 35% after eight hours. So after eight hours, that 50% drops to 35. And then within 24 hours, that significantly drops to about 25%. And so, you know, something that your friend told you yesterday, uh, you only remember about 25% uh, of the original message. So our memory, uh, you know, over time decreases. So how can we overcome this, uh, this poor memory retention? Uh, poor listening. Well, one way we could uh, increase is to uh, take notes, right? So really taking notes, really focus on the themes. Um, so when we're listening to a speaker, we can, again, focus on those key ideas, those themes, those main points, take notes and so forth. As a speaker, um, and this is already built into the structure of our presentations, as a speaker, in our introduction, we want to communicate the main points of our presentation. So we call this the preview statement. So at the end of your introduction in a speech, you will tell the audience, today I'm going to share with you X, Y, and Z, right? And then in the body of your presentation, you're gonna say, you know, let's first start with X. X is this, this, and this. Next, I wanna start with Y. Y is this, this, and this. Lastly, Z, blah, blah, blah. And then in your conclusion, you do a summary statement where you say, today I've shared with you X, Y, and Z. And if you even notice in my presentations, I start out with the chapter summary, I go through the content, and then at the conclusion, I re-summarize, you know, the things that we talked about. 
So that helps with the uh, memory retention of the audience. So you want to make sure that your audience is walking away from your presentation, understanding and remembering what you've shared with them. So how can we develop better listening skills? Well, take listening seriously. You know, understanding that this is something we take for granted every single day, like we spend most of our day uh, listening, but really take it seriously is because this is, again, one of the primary ways in which we acquire information. Be an active listener. So this doesn't mean like, you know, do push-ups or jumping jacks while you're listening. No, it's it's being active in that cognitive psychological process of processing information. So one simple way you can increase your active listening skills is really by engaging in eye contact. You know, um, uh, some research, uh, and typically I, I talk about this in uh, my interpersonal communication classes, but we'll, we'll touch on it uh, in chapter 13 when we talk about delivery. But uh, research has found that about 93% of the emotional impact from a message stems from our nonverbal behavior, right? And so that means that the emotional impact stems from how we say things, what our facial expressions are doing, our body posture. And so we can lose out on that very important information if we aren't really focused on looking at the speaker. So engage in that eye contact, assess their nonverbal behavior. The third one is resist distraction. So put away your phone, you know, try to reduce your environment so that it's quiet, it's conducive for you to be attentive to what's taking place. The fourth is don't be diverted by appearance or delivery. Again, we just touched on this. Sometimes we get so caught up in someone's uh, uh, appearance or their eloquence in delivery, or maybe it's a distracting mannerism. A few semesters ago, I had a student that would pinch their elbow when, in their speech because that was they were so nervous. They would just, they would cross their arms uh, and pinch their elbow. And that was so distracting. And so when I put that on the feedback, I was like, okay, let's work on, on, you know, changing our nonverbal behavior, the student was completely oblivious to their own behavior, but it was so distracting. So uh, I really worked with that student to break some of those unconscious uh, distracting behaviors. Um, five is suspend judgment. We've again talked about that. Really listen to the entirety of the message before arriving to a conclusion. And then focus your listening. So listening for those main points in the speech. You want to listen for evidence. You know, do does the speaker integrate research and evidence into their presentations to support their claims? This is something that we will be doing in our speeches, specifically for the informative and persuasive speech. Because in order to inform someone, we do have to back up our claims with uh, reliable and credible sources for persuasion trying to persuade someone like requires more sources of information and so we want to listen for the evidence does the speaker use good evidence um, is that evidence credible and reliable and then listen for technique. You know, how do they structure their arguments, their presentation? Do they have that introduction, the body and conclusion? Do they reveal the topics or the main points they'll be speaking to you in their introduction? Do they cover all of those main points that they told you they were going to speak on? And then in the conclusion, do they provide an insightful summary? So these are things that we can use uh, to increase our effective listening skills. So as we move through this semester, because we will be listening to speeches, um, there are two predominant listening styles we will be using. That's comprehensive listening. 
So summarizing information, recalling facts, uh, distinguishing main points from minor points. We want to, again, listen to comprehend the message that is being communicated to us. And then, of course, critical listening, separating fact from opinion. You know, so within our, our persuasive or informative speeches, we want to be able to determine, you know, what is fact and just personal opinion. Um, spotting weakness in uh, reasoning. So again, we want to look at, you know, can we arrive to this conclusion based on the evidence that the speaker has revealed and and the the thought process that 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 they use to get us to that conclusion. And then judging the soundness of evidence, you know, are we citing Wikipedia? Are we citing some sort of biased website? You know, these uh, types of evidence will detract from our credibility as speakers. Um, and, you know, the, uh, if someone is critically listening to our speech, uh, they're going to identify all these flaws and we, we aren't going to be effective. So those are the two predominant listening styles that we will be using comprehensive listening and critical listening. So this it was a brief uh, summary of chapter three. So for more information and explanations, of course, consult the textbook. But essentially there were four main things that we covered today and that was the importance of listening, how we spend most of our day listening we also looked at the differences between hearing and listening. We looked at listening and critical thinking, the four main causes of poor listening. And then lastly, we looked at some techniques and things we can do to develop our effective listening skills. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.